Imagine waking up one day and finding out your life is not your life. Finding out you are the number one enemy of the entire earth population. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. We're taking a break of firepower. We will be returning next week, but this week we're starting something new. Weatherman. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. We begin our story in the apartment of an old woman. She is admiring someone in an image. This person looks like her, so what short is her kid? And at that moment, she's interrupted by someone. This person clearly cares about this old woman. She came over because they had somewhere to be. Both of them sitting quietly in the car, trying to catch up on each other's lives. Eventually, they got to where they were heading. Everyone was coming here. This was an event. And we see that they were here to mourn. They were here to mourn their dead planet. Earth was gone and every citizen of Mars was here to mourn. The next day though, we are introduced to a team of reporters who usually have a daily show. But this morning, something was different. This morning, their weatherman wasn't around and they needed him. His segments for some reason was popular. So after going through the struggle of making contact, they finally reached out to him and he got ready as best as he could, hopped in a car with his beloved dog and went to work. He was, the weatherman driving like the madman without a care in the world he got to his office glancing at the weather reports to at least know what to say his reports were not often correct but he was entertaining and they knew it as soon as he was on screen he commanded people to laugh they found it funny this was the highlight of most people's day because this planet was a backup planet for their lost world they needed this they needed a reason to smile and he gave them a reason to smile. He was literally the planet's clown. But as usual, there was always something lurking at the surface. And in this point, something was lurking in orbit. A ship filled with bounty hunters were coming to this planet in pursuit of one man. And the leader of this lofty crew wanted to bring him in dead, a corpse, reminding his teammates that this guy deserves a bullet. But his teammates knew that this job required him to be alive or they won't get paid. But the captain, even while agreeing, made sure they knew he was not to be played with because he had a gun under his teammate's face in a nanosecond. He was like that. Back with the weatherman though, he finished giving his reports and now he had a hot date that don't do late. So he grabbed his lovely dog and he went to meet her at her place of work. She was a bartender and he liked her a lot. And he always wondered why, because he doesn't seem like the type to get a babe like this. He even ate like a madman, feeding his dog with the same chopsticks he eats from, but she still rocked with him, which was weird, because that night, the bounty hunters were coming. They found their target. He was their target. But when they scanned him, they saw that she had a gun. Why did she have a gun? At this point, they didn't care because they knew they could handle it. So they followed Nathan and his girl back home. They passed the mural and he saw the look on his girl's face. She clearly lost someone important to her, but it wasn't just her. They lost a planet. Everyone lost someone. So when they went back to their apartments, they tried to lighten the mood. He gave her some drinks and then he took some himself. Sitting next to his dog, the one thing that made him smile Instantly, his dog's head exploded. Someone shot his dog. He couldn't even comprehend what just happened, but his girl could. Matter of fact, she was shooting back. Grabbing a hold of him, she tore him out of the way. Get down. The bounty hunters were here, and his girl was tapped in because instantly, the bounty hunters were surrounded. Get on the floor now or die. And he simply said no. They opened fire, and he did too shooting down every single bullet that was shot at him. He was that good. He promised them, I'm not going to kill you boys, but she will. We see that the second bounty hunter was dropping from the jet. They were here and they meant business. But so was Nathan's girl. She was calling for backup before she was interrupted by an explosion. The third bounty hunter was here. She opened fire, but he was armored up to the T. He blocked every bullet. So she decided, screw this gun. Grabbing a kitchen utensil, she launched like an acrobat, flipping over his head, 
He swayed and tried to strike her, but he missed every attack. And that was his mistake because she struck him in three places in one second. She was good, but he was better. Grabbing a hold of her leg, he slammed her into a wall, choking her out, saying, watch. I want you to watch. I want him to see you scream. But his mistake was killing Nathan's dog because at that second, he was stabbed in the back by a large katana. He was dead. And Nathan towered over him saying, leave my girl alone before going back to grab his dog. But he was not safe, no. It was even worse than before because now he was under arrest. His own girl was pointing a gun at his head saying to him, you are under arrest for the death and the murder of 18 billion earthlings. Rewinding back to two days ago, we see the president addressing the people of Mars telling them that they will find the people who did this, who killed their planet. The people of Mars didn't care. You've been promising that for years. We want justice. And because of this, a riot broke out. They struggled to get the president out of there. But the thing is, there were people in the crowd, innocents, that died mourning a dead planet where their family was on. Sadly, the granny didn't make it. And this only triggered Amanda to go hard on Nathan. Amanda was his supposed girlfriend, and now she was his interrogator. He was being beaten up badly, and she loved to watch. She wanted to know what he knew about the sword of God, but he didn't know anything. All he cared about was his dog. So she said, oh, you want to see your dog, huh? I'll get you your dog. Enjoy your final moments while keeping his dog's corpse on his shoulders as he was bound. She was cruel. She left him there and she went to do research onto the assassins that came after him. They were professionals. Something wasn't right. And right now, they had to use a psychic's ability to scan his mind. Yes, in this world, psychics are real and they are very effective. And after her check, she realized that he was telling the truth. He knows nothing, but that's the thing. Parts of his memories have been missing. All that is left of him now is seven years. The rest of his life has been lost. So Amanda decided to sit down and tell him a story. A story about a government organization, a unit called Orca. A unit so effective they had never failed any mission ever. And one member of this organization stood out. Ian Black. He was the best of the best. And after his mission with Orca, he joined a mercenary group that will end up stealing a bomb that killed the planet Earth. After all these events transpired, he decided to cord off parts of his memory and erase his trauma, erase his past. But not only doing that, he changed his face. He became someone else. He became Nathan. Even while Amanda finished her story, Nathan simply said, what the fuck does that have to do with me? And this enraged Amanda. She kicked him over and said, you killed billions. How dare you? Before she could slit his throat, she was called back. He told her to her face, that is not me. I would never do such a thing. And she smiled, pathetic. The files are in your room. Go give it a read before going to her boss. Her boss was enraged. Why would you do such a thing? We are not animals. She tried to justify her action, but he pointed out, I lost people too. I lost my husband. I lost my child. But that is not how we do things here. We are not them. Nathan, on the other hand, was seeing the truth right in his face. He couldn't comprehend what he had done, his former self. So he made up his mind to help. The next morning, when he saw Amanda, he wanted to know the truth. What's your name? And she told him, my name is Amanda Cross. He said, nice to meet you, but I have no memories of what transpired in the past. What do you need me for anyway? And we see that right now there is a present threat. The same organization wants to blow up Mars and Venus, and they need his help to stop it. They needed his past self. They needed the killer, Ian Black. Confused about all of this, he was wondering how this was possible. But before she could answer, a missile came right for them. Boom. They were under attack. She grabbed the hold of Nathan, pulling him to safety. The bounty hunters were here, and they meant business. You took one of their own. They were here for blood. 
Amanda's boss made it clear that Amanda should escape with Nathan. Go to the White House. The president is waiting for you. He called his secretary, telling her to open a line to the president's office. But before she could even respond, we find out that Shorty was undercover. Strapped to her chest was a vest, strong enough to cause an explosion that would take out half of the base. Her boss looked to her in a moment before he died and simply said good luck. Amanda had to watch another person she cared about go up in flames. And this was just the start because this comic book gets really freaking crazy. So like and subscribe and come back tomorrow for more because this week we focus on Weatherman. <laughs>